Good morning. We have a post uh, conference. And we have June here, and she's going to tell us about her incredible trip to how many states, June? 36. To 36 states. 18,000 miles. 18,000 miles. Oh, on faith. Yes. And a thousand tears. <laughs> take off like that in an old car yeah. and a uh, very little money in her pocket, a couple thousand you had because you got something out of wreck. You got you were wrecked and you got a couple thousand dollars and that took you that paid all your hotel. Way to Washington State. That took you all the way to Washington State wow. for hotel rooms. <laughs> um, anyway I really admire that that kind of guts and gumption. And um, do you glad that you had this opportunity to do that at this time yeah. in your life? Yeah. That's right. And her sense of humor is so great. And, you know, we know we have overcome ourselves when we can poke fun at ourselves and laugh at ourselves. Right. Amen. Well, we, can, we can't see the humor in our own uh, stuff. Yeah. That's right. Then we're still into pride and, and we're still. That's good. We're still into self. Yeah, yeah. So I love the way she just uh, keeps us all laughing at all the funny things she did. So Miss June, if you will come on up and share with us what God did on it. Now I do want to say that it was from Houston that she was kicked off. Oh yes. If this was the kickoff, it was from Houston. Yes. We had a, we went to the park and had a revival. Yes. Yeah. And I also want to say Houston bought her tires, but if you need new tires, don't come to Eastgate, okay? <laughs> We were blessed. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, our yes. We were blessed to be a blessing yes. at our church. Yes. God, that God used the people in our church to do this. Yes. <laughs> so, take your liberty, my dear. Shall we turn this? Not yet. Uh, just okay. okay. Uh, I just want to say that this is a very sobering moment for me to be behind this pulpit. I know I said this when I was here a few months ago when I first kicked it off, but I woke up this morning with a very real realization of the moment that my God has brought me to. You know, I've interviewed many of you ministers that are watching this broadcast. Even last night, people that God took to hell and took to heaven and, and went through such great things for them to understand who they are in Christ. Today is the day of celebration of Him. And what he has done to take us to where we're at. My story is just my journey. It's just the destiny that he's brought me to and he's carrying me through. But I celebrate all of yours as well. I really do. I'm honored to be partnering with all of you ministers out there and hearing your stories of your triumphs and what God did to take you from here to there. And I just pray that today the Lord will give me the words and give me uh, the Holy Ghost witness to you of the journey that He's brought me through. And I pray that it encourages you and it, it breaks through that shell of the lies of the enemy that lies to people and tries to tell them you cannot be what God has called you to be, okay? Yes, so before I show this video, I just want to tell you that when I did this video was when the Lord woke me up those four days at 3 o'clock in the morning. I call it Downloads the Assignment. And I did that off of this uh, visitation from the Lord. Mm -hmm. So now I can testify. Amen. He's done three quarters of this huge vision you're about to see. Mm -hmm. And when I sat in the meeting just last week in front of Washington, D.C., in front of these the Homeland Security and the Secret Service and the National Parks Department at this big conference table. Little me. I knew that moment too. And they're like, ma'am, how many do you expect? I said, not one right now. <laughs> I want a million, but 
I said, uh, I know this. If the Lord can take me across the United States on 20 bucks, starting out 20 bucks, if he can do that, he can do a march. So this is completely, completely by faith. So I'm going to show you the video of the big picture of what God did, okay? Right. Or what he's doing right there. Okay, well that's good. Y'all get the big picture. <laughs> you know, you see it there. All right. The Lord is good, baby. Uh, but that shows you the big picture. And when I made that video, I was like, Lord, only you can make something like that happen. 
Uh, and I'll tell people I'm just a small piece of the puzzle in the great big picture of what God's doing in our nation. Uh, before I get started about all the things that happened that are so awesome, uh, I want to tell you, when I left on this tour, I did not have the revelation of land and our country. Uh, but after being on this tour and traveling to all the different states and and standing on all the different soils and seeing all the different mountains and all the animals that are different, all the birds that are different, all the beauty of the skies that are, they just look different. It's like uh, all the states have a personality. They have a, uh, you know, I mean, I can just see God now looking down on Montana and just saying, oh, I created you, Montana. You know, I want you to do this and do that. And oh, North Dakota. Look, I made your hills look like velvet. You know, like, I see him looking down on these states like this, and each one of them have a destiny. But you know these states that have a destiny are like us Christians. We all have destinies, but we're all one in the body of Christ, and that's the United States of America. There's 50 different, but they're all one. We're one, see? One body to him, one purpose. So I pray that after this today that you will have the sober realization yourself that this is your country. You are clothed in your country. You are becoming one with your land. Because you know, if you read the Old Testament, you see how God judged the land. He judged people. They're all one to Him. When He judged them, He took out the cattle, the people, the children, everything. Because it's all... Uh, like when you're there, you're a part of that. And I, I wonder if today, if we really have the realization of that, you know, that this is our land. You know, you think of the movie Braveheart, the way they die for their country. All these people out here in the military, you know, they die for their country. They have the realization that this is my land. You know, it makes you think of that song, this is my land, this, you know. Uh, so I pray that we have the realization of that. So I do bless the Lord for that, that he showed me that on the road so that now when I go to these territories, when I go to these regions, I understand. And I also understand spiritual authority. The Lord showed me that in regions. When I was in Baton Rouge, I went down there, and as soon as I got out of the car, I felt this gross darkness. I've learned how the Holy Spirit uh gives me signs of, you know, demons and stuff around. So I felt this gross darkness on my chest. And when I got out of the car, I said, I see you. I see you. And so when I walked over to the place, which was a Baptist church, right on the strip in Baton Rouge, they had the spiritual authority in that region. Okay? When I walked underneath that roof, I felt the glory, the clean, the free. I was like, Wow, okay, Lord, you're teaching me. You know, we're all teachable. You're teaching me, Lord. Okay, then I sat there with these people, and, you know, most of them were Baptists. You know, they were sitting in this room, and we was praying, and I told them, I said, when it comes my turn to pray, I said, uh, the Lord told me I need to ask you to lay hands on me and, and impart into me so that I can give into this region. I need your apostolic authority to operate, you know, so I understand that now because of what the Lord has brought me through. So they were honored that I even asked. And then they laid hands on me and they blessed me. And let me tell you what happened. I walked out of that church and I stayed in the glory. Come on. I had that covering of the mantle of the gatekeeper of the region in the spirit. Okay. I just want to say that I told y'all um, the other night, Saturday night, that this started from 40 days fasting and praying. Uh, this was praying with other prophets across the nation, partnering with heaven for President-elect Trump and what he was doing and the battle he was going through before he was inaugurated uh, with the people he was placing in cabinet with the Supreme Court. I told you that the Lord took my mother halfway in between there, and I went back in the battle after that was finished, and then I received a phone call. Do I need to tighten this? <laughs> Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Can, okay, I, I did type it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I just have a tiny ear. <laughs> um, believe it or not. <laughs> okay, um, so where was I at? Okay, so the after the 40, 40 days of fasting and praying, you know, uh, it changed me because then I loved my nation. 
I had plowed in the heavens. I've never uh, experienced prayer like that before, and it changed me to where now I have it on the inside of me, the love of my country. Right. So after that's when I received a phone call, uh, you know, why don't you do a national Christian march? And I'm like, uh, okay, let me pray about it. And then I got another phone call. So the Lord downloaded the assignment. I said, okay, Lord. Uh, you know, when he brought me from Texas, and I went back to Tennessee, the Lord blessed me and gave me six months with my mother before he took her home. Now I see all this. You know, and a lot of you that know my story, I tried to jump ahead of God and tried to start this and tried to start that because I'm an aggressive woman, you know. Uh, I'm a woman of purpose, and I'm a woman of, when I set my mind to something, I tell you I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it, you know. And uh, so I'm a very driven woman. And so I was like, I see all these things that the Lord has showed me about the future being a seer. So I was trying to start, you know, uh, the center. And, you know, I wanted to be a pastor. You know, all this stuff. I see all this. So uh, it's hard for me to sit still. And the Lord is teaching me, okay? I'm in process. And so, but now that it's all said and done, I see the Lord gave me that with my mother. And I'm so thankful. So after he took her, you know, then he launched me out. Okay, so here we go. I launched out. I had $20, the rod knocking and the uh, ball tires. And I started out in Kentucky, interviewed a bunch of ministers in Kentucky. I left Kentucky and went to Lexington. I was in Lexington, Kentucky, in a hotel before I went to D.C. It was the halfway point. And I was in the hotel, and I had a dream. And the Lord told me I was a horse in a, in a, uh, at a race. You know how Lexington, Kentucky's horses, you know, they're the race uh, place. And so I saw myself in this uh, gate waiting to go out, and I kept pushing a, as a horse, pushing up against this gate, like, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to go. <laughs> and then the Lord said, when you get to Washington, D.C., I'm opening the gate, and then you can go. I was like, okay. So in other words, he's letting me know that's where he's launching me is in D.C. So I arrived in D.C. You talking about nervous. Oh, my Lord. Um, you know, it's just so, uh, it's a dream come true. I asked the Lord during the 40 days fasting frame. We did a vision board where you write, you know, what you want from the Lord. And I wrote on there, uh, the Lord gave me a dream. I didn't tell you this about six months ago that I was sitting in this very fancy uh, gala. And I'm skinny. <laughs> I told y'all I have all these dreams. I'm skinny. And I have a television crew with me. And uh, someone come over and said, uh, we're fixing to do the interview. I said, okay. I said, all right, everybody get in your position. So I grabbed the microphone and this butler, looked like a butler, walked up to me. Excuse me, ma'am. I said, yes. She said, the president will be with you shortly. <laughs> I could listen. I woke up out of that dream. I said, the President of the United States, you're kidding. I'm going to interview the President of the United States. You know, I kind of couldn't believe it. But anyways, uh, now I see how, you know, God's putting all this together. But that was long before he even gave me the mission. Okay, so I'm in Washington, D.C., and I'm thinking, oh, my Lord, this is so amazing. Uh, being here, you know, amongst all the greatness and uh, I went to my dream, which was at Ebenezer, uh, Ebenezer Coffee House, which is uh, Mark Batterson. He wrote the book, Draw the Circle and the Circle Maker, and that's where we did the 40 days fasting and praying was off Draw the Circle. It was a prayer initiative. It's a 40-day prayer journal, and that's what we did, the nation. We partnered together to pray it in what God was doing in our nation. So I went there, and I was, did a live broadcast, and I'm like, this is so epic you know, uh, being in here in this place. And so the lady that was my host home, she bought me a bunch of things in D.C. Uh, the flag, uh, if she's watching, thank you. Uh, the flag and some other little souvenirs. And so when I left D.C., we painted my car. And on the back it had, Mega Revival, March for Jesus. And on the side it had the website, you know, with the shoe polish thing. And this was so funny, y'all. I leave there, I head into Virginia, and then all of a sudden the storm came. And I mean, it was like pouring down where the wipers were like this, and, and the raindrops were so big. And I look back, 
and no rain on those words. No rain on the words or on the side. And I was like, oh, how can I film this? You know how you think you want to document the miracles? I was like, how do I film this? And I couldn't do it because I had to concentrate. You know, like I had to drive in this mess. And I was like just praising the Lord in the midst of the storm. I was like, you're so amazing. Uh, it's the little things that you do. You let me know that I am in your will. You know, that was his little uh, gift to me. So I told you that he's uh, showed me the six places I'm going to pray, three on the east side of the Mississippi, three on the west. So I'm driving down the east, and I'm like, Lord, you know I have no money. I need somewhere to stay tonight. And uh, all of a sudden, I got a phone call from a, a ministry in Oklahoma. And they said, do you have a room tonight? And I said, no. And they said, we would like to bless you. And I was like, well, thank you. So the Lord blessed me with a room. So I left, and then I was heading to Daytona Beach. And by the way, I stopped and interviewed all kinds of people. I interviewed them at rest stops, stores. I mean, the Lord, when you're on a mission, everything you do is divine. It's really amazing how God does that. All the people that walk up to you, it's like he just brings them to you. He, he goes before you in these cities and he prepares the way. And, and when you're at the gas station, you're with them, just the right person. It's so uh, amazing. So I interviewed all these people. And so I'm riding through um, Georgia. And I'm like, Lord, uh, I'm almost through with the East Coast on the south, and, you know, why have you not showed me where the city is yet? So I stayed the night in Daytona Beach. I had a dream. And the Lord said, your first one is Miami. You're to go to the port, you're to proclaim all this, take your shoes off and proclaim this. So the next morning, I took the rest of the money I had and went to Miami. Well, I get down there, and all of a sudden, I have a realization, oh, my Lord, you really just drove to the ends of the United States uh, off of Oh, you know, the word of the Lord. And so I had a realization. Here I am. Okay, Lord, I have nothing left. I'm stuck. i got to have you move. So I'm down there, and this is so funny. I still have the words on my car, and I'm kind of lost trying to find the port, and I all of a sudden turn, and I'm driving right through a homosexual parade. <laughs> in Miami. And I was like, oh my God, I'm surrounded by homosexuals. <laughs> and uh, they had the rainbow flag and you know they was all doing all their uh, celebrations and everything. Y'all wanna <laughs> y'all wanna feel funny. All these cars out there are Lamborghinis and limos and Jaguars and all these expensive cars. <laughs> Here I am in my beat up car, you know, and I'm like driving through there. Jesus! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just ride, they call it the strip, that's what it is. I'm riding through the strip and I'm just <laughs> You know, I'm just praying in tongues, you know. I'm like, God give me out of this hell, you know. And I, so I went down to the port. I went down to the port and I they was wanting to charge the park there and I didn't have any money. So this man was walking, I could tell he was an employee, and I just rolled down my window, I said, sir, I'm not here for anything but prayer. <laughs> I said, I need somewhere where I can have grass to stand <laughs> And he's like, okay. And he's like, you can go right over there, man, it was next to a restaurant. So I went over there, and I'm having to do this in front of everybody. <laughs> shoes off and I plant my natural feet you know and I was like I pray against sex trafficking you are not going to come through this port anymore I pray against drugs and yeah. I pray anything that harms the integrity of the United States yeah. citizens you know? and so I'm saying all the things the Lord told me to say and I'm like okay you know so I get back in the car <laughs> and I drive and I pull over somewhere I said okay Lord I'm done. I'm out of gas. <laughs> I'm done. I, I need some help here, you know. So it was about five minutes later, I received a phone call. Thank God I had a phone. And so, <laughs> and I had, by the way, by this time, I had my little B iPhone 5, okay? 
okay? The Lord tell me, you're going to interview people all over the United States. You're going to do live streaming. <laughs> you're going to do live streaming everywhere. And I'm thinking, you're going to have to give me some equipment because what I got ain't going to work, you know? And because uh, I do have the B camera. God bless me with that, you know, for interviews. All right, so I'm like, okay, Lord. So I get a phone call, and this woman says, do you have a place to stay tonight? And I said, no. And she said, well, I have a friend who wants you to stay with him. I was like, thank you, Jesus. Man, I, listen, I get to this house, and it's a beautiful ranch in Okeechobee, Florida. I've never heard of such a city, but it was awesome. I was in that ranch, and I was like, I feel like the prettiest horse out here. <laughs> so beautiful like uh, they had all the horses I mean this ranch is magnificent like they've got this thing gated off and it's very elegant and beautiful and they've got a swimming pool and you know it's just like acres and acres of horses just roaming I mean well, I didn't even know Florida could do that <laughs> you know what I'm saying like I was saying they're just all beaches and whatnot uh, but while I was there it was my time of rest and it was so sweet because the woman that God divinely lined me up with ministered to me after I had been out there plowing and praying and that was my time of rest. And she told me, she said, the Lord told me to tell you that you are to stay here for two days and do nothing but rest. I'm going to help you. So I was like, wow, this is awesome. Well, she filled up my car with gas. And when I left, she gave me a beautiful gift laying on the bed. And I opened up the bag, and there was a thing with $1,000 cash. And I was like, thank you, Lord. And then her friend bought my books for $200. She just wanted all of them, so she said, here, here's you a donation for $200. And I was like, thank you, Lord. So I pulled off there, and I was like, I had already asked the Lord, Lord, I need the equipment. I, I need a phone that can do this. I need some service. I can't do cricket. I can't do the Walmart plan. i got to have Verizon. You know what I mean? Like, I knew I was going to be out in the desert and I'm going to be in these places. I need some real stuff, you know. So, uh, I, here I am. The Lord gave me $1,200. So, I called this woman. And I said, ma'am, did you give me that $1,000 for Mega Revival or can I use it for equipment? You know, like, I mean, the equipment's for Mega Revival, but you know. And she's like, honey, I gave that to you. So you use it how you need to. I was like, let's go to Verizon. So I, I, this is a free commercial for Verizon. Uh, so I went to Verizon, and I told them, I said, I need the best you got. Because the Lord has got me on a mission. And they gave me the best. I had the best phone, iPhone 7 Plus, which rocks, honey. And then I got the unlimited plan. Okay, so I was like, wow, Lord. Right before I went to Orlando, which is another one of the big cities. You know, I told y'all the other day that the Lord gives me guides in all the big cities. So I was like, thank you, Lord. So the Lord gave me a guide in Orlando. Wow, I interviewed all kinds of ministers. God opened the, in all the big cities, he opened the floodgates uh, for me to interview these people to get their voices out there. So I interviewed this lady that is the head of the Liberty Prayer Network, head of the national 24-7 prayer network that prays over the Supreme Court. Like, her level of prayer, the governmental authority, she prays for the president. It's like, I was like, I was sitting with this woman, like, you know, I knew who I was with, you know. A lot of people don't reverence intercessors, but I do very much so. And I love interviewing intercessors. So this is what I asked that woman. I said, man, I said, first of all, I just want to say thank you for fighting for our country. You're a soldier, you know. You go into battle every day, and a lot of people don't appreciate intercessors. So I asked her, I said, I want you to tell us the behind the scenes of the election and the, uh, when he was put in an office. I want to know the real deal. It was so engaging. I was like just weeping like, wow, what God did. Here's the gist of it. That night, everybody was on the line when the results were coming in. Oh, they was fighting, hour by hour, minute by minute, fighting in the spirit for the results to come out to be what God wanted. So they thought they had plateaued and broke through at midnight. 
when they did, she went back to bed, everybody went to bed, and they thought the victory was won. The Lord woke her up at 2 o'clock in the morning, and he said, the baby is stuck in the canal. Get back on the prayer line. She called everybody back and said, we got to go back to war. The baby's stuck in the canal. They went to war, and they fought until the announcement was made. Is that not amazing? How, what was happening in the undercurrent while this national battle was going on? So they thought they was done. And the Lord said, no, nope, you got 70 more days of battle. You have to fight for him to even get in. And she said the Lord told her that the enemy forces are determined to take him out. Like, this is a serious war going on. And so I'm listening to this woman, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so amazing. I knew that was a divine appointment for the, you know, something that God had nationally in the future. So that was, and a lot of times when you meet people that are divine appointments, it's a love, it's, it's so hard to explain. It's a connection of, I would die for you. Like, I know who you are, you know. And so I left Orlando, and I uh, went to this other church, and I won't get into much detail, but I had an eye-opening experience uh, about a little sickness going on. And then I left there and went back to the house. I thought, okay, I'm going to rest a few days. I went back to the house, and I, uh, it was almost like the devil come to see me. It's not like I can say he walked in the room or anything, but I had these thoughts coming to me. Because the church was not reacting like I thought they should. I'm like, what in the world is going on out here? We voted this man in. You know, uh, we know he was fighting for the kingdom of God. He, it's, and, and my my interpretation of what's going on after I've interviewed by this time the 250 ministers across the nation, I thought it was uh, very clear what happened. Uh, you have the kingdom of darkness. And yet the kingdom of light. I mean, it's like plain as day in my interpretations. Because it's a battle of two kingdoms. The clash of two kingdoms. So I'm thinking, how can ministers vote for that? Like, how can you stand and say you're a minister of the living God who fights for life and light, and you're going to vote for extreme darkness? I just could not fathom this. So I was thinking... When I went out there and started this thing, yeah, let's go, Christians, come on. We're taking our country back. God gave us a window of opportunity to take our country back. Let's go. Come on now. So I get out there, and it's like, clamp across the board. It's like, what the world? I don't know what is going on. So I'm sitting there, and the devil's telling me, just quit. Everybody thinks you're crazy. you tried other things before, and they failed. Stop it. Look how you look crazy out here. You know, you have no money and you're just driving, you know. And uh, so I had $20 again. $20 again. And I said, I woke up the day I was supposed to leave and I told the Lord this again. I said, Lord, either you told me this or you didn't. So I am going to drive until that $20 runs out and I'm just going to believe that I have heard you, Lord. And so I took off driving, and that's when I drove down to Mississippi and went to. Uh, so the Lord just blessed me. I got to Mississippi. Some ministers gave me some money. I went down to Baton Rouge and was able to go out there on the streets. Oh, if y'all don't know me, I am a, a street minister. I do love traveling. I mean, uh, Pastor Carolyn was talking to me about that earlier. Uh, I do love traveling because I love meeting all these people, and especially when I can be out there loving on poor people and and giving people hugs when they're homeless and all this. So I'm out there on the streets and I'm in my element, honey. Let me tell you out there. And so I was live on air and I'm filming all these people walk by. And this is out there in the midst of, you know, the demonic forces overhead that are just driving these people to do crazy things out there. And I'm sitting there looking, and there's this man, and he's uh, very much a letter of the law. And he's driving these two men I was with uh, kind of crazy because he, he kept wearing them out with the word. And he kept saying, well, the Bible says this, and the Bible says that. You know, and he was very 
uh, this and that. But I was hearing this theme in his heart. And so when they got finished, the other two guys, they just walked up. So I walked up to this gentleman. And I said, sir, I just have one question. I said, do you forgive? And he said, what do you mean? I said, well, the Bible says if you have unforgiveness in your heart, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Oh, you know, because he was so much about law that he just forgot his heart, you know. And so then I left there. I left uh, and did the, the Lord told me that was another city, New Orleans. So I went to the port of New Orleans. There was a little bit of things different than what he said about Miami, but really they was kind of the same. So I left New Orleans and here I'm driving to uh, Houston to be here with Miss Carolyn. And I'm driving to Houston and I'm out again. I'm at the end of my rope again. So I look at Houston and I say, I love you, Houston, because I do. I feel like uh, Houston, the soul of Houston is so giving. Uh, because it's not just this church, it's the region. Uh, there's so many ministries here that I'm connected to that are uh, so generous in their heart. You know, like they welcome me. Oh, you're welcome to come here. You're, you know, they recognize my giftings and they honor me and they, they bless me, you know, and they pay me for when I do my work and that type of deal. Uh, so I feel respected here and appreciated. And so I was like, I love you, Houston. And then the Lord spoke back and he said, you're about to receive an upgrade. So I was like, thank you for my car, Lord. You know, I was like, I'm in a car. And so the next week, uh, the Lord blessed me. Uh, and a ministry paid $1,000 to fix my rod knocking. And then three ministries chipped together and bought me tires. Uh, and then after the tires, they bought me clothes and nails and hair. And so I left here and I was like, wow, I'm feeling good, you know. And so I was riding down the road and uh, one of those ministers was following me. Or she was in front of me. And all of a sudden this car came out of nowhere and went bam and hit me right in the car door at about, you know, 30 mile an hour or whatever. And it kind of startled me. And I uh, got out of the car, and it was a young lady. She was a Muslim. And she uh, was like, oh, man, I'm so sorry. Um, I didn't mean to hit you and whatnot. And uh, I was thinking, uh, I could tell, like, she was a Muslim or something. And so we pulled the car over, waiting on the police. And then uh, I told her, I said, uh, she was telling me she's a Muslim and she don't live it. Uh, but she believes it in her heart type of deal. So I began to reveal to her uh, who Jesus is because I know that that religion, uh, they have a, a, you know, a distorted view of who Jesus is because they believe he's just a prophet. And I told her, I said, ma'am, he is much more than a prophet. And I laid hands on this girl and I prayed that she would have a, a revelation of him. Because, you know, we can talk all day long, but when the Holy Spirit reveals himself and he makes Jesus real to her, it will be not just a repeat after me, you know, uh, a quick thing, but it's a inside here, a life-changing transformation. I will die for you, Jesus, moment. So I pray, God, reveal yourself to these people. Now, if people tell me I am ready to receive the Lord, after I know that the Holy Spirit's been ministered, I know that that timing's right to do that. You see what I mean? I don't believe in just walking with somebody, repeat after me. You know, because I believe it's a work in process. But that's just me, you know. So she hit me, and I, they told me, ma'am, can we meet with you on Monday? I said, no, sir. I said, I'm on a tour, and I have to go south. I have to be on the Mexico border today. So if we're going to do this, we're going to have to do this. You're going to have to follow me on this tour for this meeting. Because I knew I ain't, I'm not slowing down for nobody. I'm on a mission. I'm doing a job for God. So he said, they called me and said, okay, we'll meet you in FAR, which is P-H-A-R-R, -R, Texas, which is on the Mexico border, and it's right at the furthest part of Texas, right near the... Uh, east side. So uh, they came down there and he just handed me a check for $1,900. And I was like, yes, Lord, come on now. This is my hotel rooms. Because uh, I didn't know anybody. Uh, this is my hotel rooms from here all the way to Washington. We're talking two and a half, three weeks of hotel rooms. And I knew that 
I had to stay in Los Angeles uh, for nine days, and I knew already that was going to be like $1,000 or something. And so I'm like, Lord, I need some serious money, you know. And uh, so while I was down there in Florence, Texas, I was with a very nice gentleman who is 92 years old, a World War II veteran. And so I just honored him so much. Oh, by the way, while I was in Houston, here's Miss Carolyn. I'm going to tell him you're pastor a minute. <laughs> she comes up to me and she says, the reason this tour is not, you know how she does. The reason this tour is not the way that you think it is, is because God has you hidden. He is going to reveal to you the sickness in the church. Well, my heart's grieving because I'm thinking, well, I mean, that answered that question of why people are not feeling the way I do about just coming out and going, in your face, devil, come on! Woo! We got a victory. We're taking our nation back, you know. Uh, so I'm thinking, okay, God's got me hidden. All right, Lord. So the very next church I go to, I'm sitting in the church. And the worship was amazing. Like, I even posted on Facebook, this worship is amazing. And then I see this woman come from the front row. I'm sitting kind of in the back. And she comes from the front row, and she looks like she stepped out of a club. She has a short skirt on, flaring, very tight, uh, with all this showing, with stilettos on, no pantyhose. <laughs> And I looked at this woman and I thought, uh, who's this sitting, you know how you think, uh, who's this sitting on the front row? Because usually it's just ministers on the front row. And I'm like, uh, dressed like this. Because I saw earlier, you know, a few months back, this woman go up on the platform in another church in another city. And it was like that. She had on a short skirt and the, the platform was elevated high. And when she would move, it's very inappropriate. And it grieved my heart because in that particular church, I have prayed with many women who are badly the spirit of lust in their husband. And then you have ministers up there dressing like this. It's so, uh, it's, it's like the whore. You know, the whore before the Lord because there's no fear of the Lord. There's no uh, respect for other people like uh, you know the reason we do manor classes where we learn how to eat. Uh, now I'm being serious with our children, yeah, and we, we teach our children. You know, you say yes, ma'am, and you say no, ma'am, and you open doors for people, and and you act like this. The only reason we do that is respect. Right. That's right. You don't want to offend other people, so you don't want to be smacking your food. Uh, you know, are doing things that would harm other people. And the Bible says, be careful not to be a stumbling block. Mm -hmm. So if you're walking behind the pulpit and you're causing these men out here to lust, mm -hmm. there it is. Uh, the attention's drawn to you and not the Father. That's right. That's it. Yeah. That's right. So I'm thinking, uh, okay, so the Lord had already told me through Pastor Carolyn that for me to go now with this different, it's the whole reason he sent me. And so I'm sitting there, and this woman walks by, and I thought, well, maybe she's just a guest. You know, maybe she don't know. And so the apostle gets up there, and he says, I want y'all to meet my wife. And she walked up there, and I was like, oh, my gosh. I mean, like, I'm wanting to cry. You know, like, I know this cannot be what I'm seeing. And she gets up there, and she grabs the microphone, she's preaching like one hit a bomb and you know all on fire but as she's moving here and moving there everything's flying you know and I'm thinking I'm sitting here watching this oh my gosh and then when she gets finished uh, the apostle's like yeah I know she's hot or something like that walks off I got it and walked out I was like I am not putting up with this this is I just want to in my spirit I just want to throw up when I get around situations that are uh, because the Lord did separate me and, and caused me to not look, not hear, and He consecrated me and set me apart. And when I get around uh, demonic things, uh, my, I, my spirit gets sick. 
And it's like I'm just wanting to throw up. And that's the way I felt that day. And I thought about Pastor Carolyn. I'm like, God, please help me. Uh, I don't know, you know, how to, what to do about this because, you know, when God sends you, you look at yourself like, why me? Mm -hmm. You know, like, uh, I want to do this right and I, I honor you, Lord. I just want to be able to do it right. So what do I do with this information? So while I was uh, in far Texas, another town, uh, while I was there, the Lord gave me a dream. And he said, the next city for you to do proclamations is El Paso, Texas. Well, my brother had told me, don't you go to El Paso because, uh, you know, they'll kill you there. He's military. And so I had it off my radar. I was not going to El Paso. But when the Lord sent me there, of course, I obeyed. So I went there and got two night hotels. And while I was there, the Lord woke me up at 3 o'clock in the morning and said, go now. So he told me to go to the border, do these proclamations over the border against these spirits that try to come in through Mexico. And there is where I made the proclamation of the Mexico wall. Mm -hmm. The wall that uh, the president wants to build. And I interviewed a lot of Texans about that, you know, down at the southern border. Uh, what do you think about the wall? And it was very interesting. Uh, I cannot wait to do this documentary for y'all to see what all these Americans think. Uh, these are real people that God put me with. So I left El Paso and I drove into Phoenix, Arizona. Well, I'm in Phoenix and I got this hotel that had a swimming pool. And I was like, Lord, you know I love pools. You know, so I put on my bathing suit and I go out to the pool. Do you know I was out there? I hardly got to swim because there was two people that needed the Lord so bad. One of them was a, a veteran of the uh, Vietnam. He was a veteran of Vietnam. And he told me when we got to talking that he just tried to kill himself the night before. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, in my heart I'm just weeping, but I'm rejoicing too because I'm like, ha, huh, devil, you thought you had it. Mm -hmm. And God brought me here. And I'm telling you, you cease all that. You know, uh, it's the divine appointments. And this other woman, she had lost her children. And she was so devastated, and she was in prostitution and uh, all these different things, situations of defilement to her temple. And she came back to my room, and I sat down with this woman. And I gave her my life story, my book. You know, we all have a story. And I told this woman, I said, ma'am, I held her hands while we were sitting there on the bed. And I told her, I said, I just want you to know I'm not judging you. Um, you know, the Lord knows what you've been through, ma'am. But he brought me here to tell you how much he really loves you. And he divinely put me with you. So we're going to uh, deal with this today in the spirit. And that woman just wept. Which a lot of women do. They lay right here on me like I do you. <laughs> I call her mama. But, uh, she laid on my chest and she just like cried like a baby. And the presence of the Lord was so thick there. And it's those moments you're like, oh my gosh, thank you, Lord. That you had me in the right place at the right time. So I left there and went to Los Angeles. Here I am. Okay, I'm driving down the road. I had my sunroof off. I had my windows down. I had this uh, prayer thing with the Lord. Uh, it's very personal, uh, very intimate. Uh, riding down the road, uh, he, I would say 98% of the time on the road with him, the sun shines on my face. I don't know how to explain this, but he gives me beautiful weather. He loves uh, this time with me is the way I feel about it. And so he shines on me, and I'm worshiping him, and I'm uh, praying to secure the borders and praying for the state and just uh, loving the presence of the Lord. So I'm coming up on California. <laughs> Here's this little national girl. Okay, I'm coming up on California. Boy, I take my phone out, and it says Los Angeles. I was like, here I come, Los Angeles. Nashville's coming to Los Angeles. <laughs> so I get out there, and I start riding through California. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, you are beautiful. California, I was thinking you was all uh, oceans. And, you know, I had no idea you 
oh, you have these beautiful mountains. And this is funny. I went up on my first mountain that had snow on the top. So I, <laughs> I took out my camera and I was like, look, Brad, how awesome is this? It's like 80 degrees down here and there's uh, snow at the top of the mountain. You know, it's just the little small things uh, on the road that I really enjoyed was the beauty of the scenery. And so I was like, wow, California, you're really beautiful. And so uh, when I got into Los Angeles, I asked the Lord, Lord, please, I, I relate to Amy Simple McPherson. I'm a very creative person. In my sermons, I like to do visuals. And she's very uh, artsy, and she loves everybody, and she has a personality like me, and she wants everybody to get involved. And, you know, uh, so I, I relate to her more than any of the other revival uh, great generals. And so I said, Lord, please let me go to her church. I want to go to the Dream Center, Lord, because I want to go to Skid Row. I, that's a dream for me, Lord. I want to be down there uh, with all the people that are suffering. I want to just touch them, Lord. I, I want to touch their faces, and I want to hug these people, Lord. Uh, just, you know, just to be able to do that would just make my trip to California so great. And then I would like to meet the people from Azusa Street. You know, I'm like a dreamer. I'm like, I would like to meet the, the people from Azusa Street, and I'd like to go to the Bonnie Brave House, Lord. So I get to California, and I'm in a motel seat. <laughs> I'm in the cheapest one I can find. And so, but it was a decent 